who we are. We are a nationwide lead provider. We provide leads to investors, realtors, attorneys, and just your basic first-time home buyer. We've been in business since 2004, and since then, we've been the internet's number one destination for the most detailed and timely information. I'm Tangie Cousins, for the ones that don't know me. I've been with Foreclosures Daily since 2004, and since then, I've helped them grow their business, and I've worked with many investors, realtors, and attorneys throughout the years. I teach the do's and don'ts of marketing and unique marketing techniques on how to get people to open your mail and the do's and don'ts of marketing. How we are different here at Foreclosures Daily. All of our leads will have real estate attached, period. There's a lot of companies out there that will give you leads, but the problem is, is are there properties attached? When people go through probates or when people go through divorce, there's not always a property involved, right? So you wanna make sure that when you use a company they have real estate attached. So that's what makes us different and unique here at Foreclosures Daily is all of our leads are weekly and fresh, and they are farm for real estate. Other companies tend to be quarterly and not farming for physical property. So that's why we are different. So some of the leads that we have to offer here at Foreclosures Daily are things like probate, pre-probate, inheritance, code violation, eviction, divorce. Guys, probate and pre-probate by far are crushing it right now. Probates and pre-probates are amazing. They have a ton of equity. They typically don't mind taking a discount and they're extremely motivated to sell their property. People tend to be much older, you know, when they lose their parents. So they usually don't want the property. They usually want to sell the property. So they'll most likely always give you deeply discounted rates. And a lot of times you can get these for deeply wholesale discounted pricing. So probates are amazing. They have tons of equity. Don't mind taking a discount. Very motivated sellers. The same thing with pre-probates. A probate is one week after they file. A pre-probate is one week after the death. Both very lucrative. Pre-probates are really good too. Not only are you first at the door, but if they do inherit the property via a trust, you could buy now, no lines, no waiting. So that's the benefit of using things like pre-probates as well. Evictions are really good. You know, the moratorium was lifted. A lot of people had a misconception that evictions were not happening the entire time. They were actually happening the entire time. It's just that there was rules and stuff that you had to read to follow exactly what was going on. So evictions were still allowed. It's just that the owner had to be home, the homeowner, if they wanted to evict somebody, the tenant had to prove hardship due to COVID to, you know, to basically cover themselves from that law of not being able to be evicted during the COVID process. So evictions have been happening this whole time, but what's good is a lot of people dropped off because they didn't think they were happening. So that's a really good hot spot right now. So evictions are real good. Divorce leads are very good. All of the leads are weekly and fresh and all farm for real estate. You never get more than like 25 leads a week. We do have a cap on those six lead types that I mentioned. And the reason why is we have to know what to charge you, right? So it's like, we don't really know how many people are going to pass with real estate or file for divorce. So what we did is we did a nationwide statistic, and there's usually no more than 25 leads a week anyways, unless you're in a bigger county. So those are some of the leads that we have. And here's marketing. We offer a lot of marketing with our leads. When you buy leads from us, we do offer postcards and letters and so on and so forth. Then this company will actually give you a deeply discounted rate for um, using the postcards. They'll, they'll mail postcards for you for only 38 to 42 cents with postage. So it's really cheap. Uh, and they get that discount through our company using a special link that you can click on when you buy leads from us. We also give you access to a letter. This has got the handwritten font, which is really awesome. It's very legible. It looks like you hand wrote the letter yourself and the envelope. And they're only charged like 64 cents with postage for these as well. We do give you a lot of bonuses when you buy leads through us. We give you things like a six-step mailing campaign. A six touch campaign, we give you access to our phone scripts, we give you emails to send to the attorney expressing interest in the said property, the postcards, the letters, we mail you a physical probate book to your property or business called Probate Real Estate Sales 101. And the author's name is Kevin Sales, we actually know him. So we'll share a webinar that we did together teaching the seven ways to make money with probate real estate investing. So you get a lot of different bonuses and benefits to using our list. So that's pretty much all I wanted to tell you guys about our list is the different types of leads that we do offer and um, what we can do from you. If you do stay on to the end of this webinar, we have some surprises for you. So absolutely stay on. So you can get any bonuses that are offered. So you have to be on this call in the end to get anything that's being offered by Tiffany and Josh or, my, or ourselves here at Foreclosures Daily. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen for just a moment because I want Tiffany and Josh to start sharing their screen. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about them. I met Tiffany many, many years ago and they started investing about six years ago. 
And it took them about six months to find their first deal. But let me tell you, when they found their first deal, they absolutely exploded. In their first year, they did 40 rehabs. In their second year, they did 165 deals rehabbing and wholesaling. They actually exploded into massive results. And since then, they've been doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of deals a year. They've been recruiting and building out, onboarding and leading out high performance sales teams. And they're going to teach you guys how to do a lot of these things tonight. So without further ado, I would love to introduce you to Tiffany and Josh. Hi, how are you guys doing? Thanks so much for having us on. I'm super excited. Can you guys hear us? Yeah, we can hear you. Can't see you, but we can hear you. Oh, oh can you not, yep. can you not see my screen? Yes, I can. Sorry about okay. that. My <laughs> All screen. right. Perfect. Um, awesome. Well, I'm super excited to be on again. Um, super excited to give as much value as I possibly can. Um, any questions you guys have throughout the process, uh, we'll answer them. I have uh, Dylan on my team is actually on this as well. So if you have direct questions, he can try to answer some as we're presenting. And then we'll also take, you know, whatever questions you guys have at the end. And I'm, we're, we're here to stay. So whatever you guys got questions on, we'll answer as many as we can. All right, Tiffany, I'm going to go ahead and take, let you take it away from here, but I also forgot to mention that you and Josh have been using our leads for many, many years now and have had some great success with that. So. Yeah, we uh we've been using foreclosures daily for what four or five years now. At least yeah, a long yeah. time. Yeah. Um. Yeah. We any list that they have available in any place that we're in, we're buying. So we're big believers. We've gotten tons of deals off of them. We pull every single one of our courthouse data lists off of them. Um. Everyone that's available in our county. So highly recommend it. And actually, as we go through some of this, we can even talk a little bit about maybe how we use them as well. Thanks a lot, guys. Take it away. Have a great evening. We'll see you soon. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, I'm Tiffany. Uh, this is Josh. He's my husband and he runs uh, Heels Homes with me. Um, we also have an education side as well, and we can get to that later on. Um, just to give you a quick background, uh, oh, let's make sure that this is working. All right, cool. I'm actually going to leave this up for now. Um, so I just want to first start off with how we got started in real estate, because I know you guys are all at different places of your journey, and I want to make sure that you guys know where we came from and where we're at today. Um, so we actually started flipping houses about six years ago. I was actually a corporate leader in the corporate space. And uh, long story short, my youngest brother got diagnosed with cancer when he was in high school. And I was uh, out in the field traveling all over the country for my corporate career. Um, and he got pretty serious. He was in the hospital for over a year. And uh, I was traveling by plane Monday through Friday. Um, and I could barely see him. So about five or six months into that journey of his cancer, um, I was there on a Sunday at Nationwide Children's. And I remember looking across the bed and saw my parents sitting there. And my parents actually had never left his bedside for over 365 days. Um, so they had actually ran a few different companies themselves. And I remember looking across the room saying, how have you guys not left his side for the entire year in the hospital? And they said, well, our team is running everything for us. Um, and that really opened my eyes to one, I, I knew I wasn't going to be a good mom if I was traveling by a plane Monday through Friday. And two, like seeing how well they built up a team in all of their companies. Um, they had about 50 employees in one of their companies. And to see what they had built that enabled them to be there for such a critical moment in their life was life changing for me. Um, that happened to be around Easter of that year. So on Good Friday, I woke up and I just, uh, God was calling me to do something different. So I had no idea I was actually going to get in real estate. I just woke up that day, listened to my calling, walked in, quit my job, and literally had no idea what I was doing next. Um, so I didn't even tell Josh and we were engaged at the time. So um Anyways, after that, uh, it took us about six months. I actually ended up paying into a bunch of education programs to learn how to flip houses. And it took us six months to find our first deal. Once we found our first deal and got the confidence in it, we did about 40 rehabs our first year. From there, um, sounds sexy, but it wasn't. I actually made a ton of mistakes rehabbing houses and I probably won't get into all those today. One of them cost me six figures that year. Um, and from there, we learned how to wholesale. We did about 165 wholesales our second year. And then we went back on our third year and started flipping, wholesaling, buying rentals. And we do hundreds of deals a year ever since. Um, so the journey hasn't been easy, uh, but we're going to go through a lot of today um, on how we recruit, onboard, and 
build a sales team. And I think that that's one of the biggest pieces I think missing in a lot of our industry trainings is really building a team versus doing everything yourself. So I think um, that's what we're going to focus on today. So I really want to break down everything Tiff just described. And really, it's the journey that not just we are on, but everyone here on this call, we're all on this journey to get what we what we think we really want. And to break that down, if I were to ask everyone on here, what's the reason you got into real estate? Why are you wholesaling? Why are you buying rentals? Why are you uh, doing fix and flips? Well, the reality is we got into real estate because we saw an opportunity to make a lot of money, right? But it's not about the money. It's really about what the money is going to get us. And if I were to ask every single one of us on this call here, what is it that we really want that we think money is going to get us? It's, it's freedom of our time. It's being able to do what we want when we want and spend that time with the people we want to spend it with. So if you break down this process, it's a three-step process. Okay. The first step is where we wear all the hats. We do everything. We're the the marketing specialist, we are uh, the bookkeeper, we are the acquisition specialist, we do all the dispo, we're the project manager, the admin, everything. And that's good, it's, it's required to get you to a certain point, but we all only have a certain capacity and the reality is you're gonna reach a limit at some point. Now, if you truly wanna take the next step, which is the second step in this process of really magnifying your results, you have to build a team. And there's really two pieces to this. There's the management side of team building and there's the leadership side of team building. To give you guys an example of each, managers are really good at managing results, getting duplicable, repeatable results. They know that if I do A and B, I'm always going to get C versus leaders focus on growing people. And I want to bring up a book. If you guys are interested in, in uh, growing as a leader, John C. Maxwell has a book called uh, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And in this book, he talks about this concept called the law of the lid. And he says that whatever level of a leader you are, your organization will be capped at that. So for example, if you're a level four leader on a scale of one to 10, your organization will never be greater than a four. But the good thing is you can grow as a leader. And as you grow as a leader, say to a level eight, now all of a sudden your organization can grow alongside of you. So it's very important that we focus on building our leadership capability so that we can grow our organization. The best example of these two is the movie called The Founders. I don't know if anyone's seen that on Netflix. It's a great movie. I highly recommend it. And The Founder is a story about the McDonald's brothers and the restaurant McDonald's that we all know. And ultimately what happens is you have these two brothers that are the best world-class managers. They've created this cutting edge process that was new to the restaurant industry. And they knew how to make burgers and fries the same exact quality and faster than any, anyone at the time could do it. Well, they were really good at managing this process. And as they went to scale this concept and franchise it out, they failed time and time again. In fact, they were capped at only having two stores when Ray Kroc comes into the picture. Ray Kroc at the time was a milkshake salesperson. He steps in with his leadership capability and is able to take this thing from a two-store company to a worldwide enterprise. That's the importance of learning and growing our leadership capabilities. Now, the last step, the third step is getting to that freedom that we all want. And what I mean by that is the, the one example I could give everyone on this call is the concept of being a private money lender. At this step, I have the funds now that I can invest and I can no longer have to trade my time for money. For, I don't have to go to uh, bag groceries in order to earn an income. I can let my money make money on itself. And I can spend my time doing what I want, when I want, with the people I want to spend that time with. So today, like Tiff mentioned, we're going to really focus on taking ourselves from that first step where we wear all the hats and talking about our first hire or our first few hires into building a team so that we can magnify our results. So today we're going to talk about how we become profitable, consistent, and predictable. Um, to be honest with you guys, one of the things that growing up in this industry over the last uh, five to six years is that we attend all these events and we take these trainings. And unfortunately, a lot of the trainings will teach you how to do everything. So you to cold call or you to do this and you to do that instead of teaching you how to build a team that can help you become consistent and predictable. Um, so we're going to talk about how we build the foundation, our systems and processes. We recruit the right people 
how we have an onboarding plan for them and set expectations and we want to become the right leader. So we'll get into the details as we go through here, but I don't care if you want to make 10 grand, 30 grand, 100 grand, 500 grand a month. Um, what I care about the most is that it's consistent, it's predictable, and it's profitable. And you can do that at any level you want. Um, and I think it's just important that you become predictable. Uh, if anyone on here is doing quite a bit of deals a month, I'm sure you've been through a time in your, in, in your journey through this industry that's up and down. And we all know that that creates anxiety swings that we want to prevent. And the way we prevent that is through becoming predictable. So let's talk about building the foundation. Um, CRM. So just so you guys know, the first year when we did 40 deals, we did it on pen and paper. So don't ever let a CRM hold you back from becoming wildly successful. Um, you can do that and get started without a CRM. Now, I'm a big believer in whatever CRM that you do that is customizable. So I don't care if it's Podio, Salesforce, you know, uh, REI Blackbook, any of these other CRMs, as long as that platform allows you to customize as you build. So if it, if that subscription doesn't allow you to customize things, I highly recommend you go with a platform that allows you to customize it. Um, one of the mistakes we made along the way was we got thousands of leads in a system that trapped me and my growth. And then we had to then transfer over to a customized build out so that as my team grew and needed things as the team would build out, I needed to make sure that the system would customize to our growth. Phone systems. Um, so quick story, on our third year in real estate, we built a team up to 12 salespeople and it was miserable. And what happened was as we started growing, we hired a bunch of people that we didn't hire based on core values. We didn't have the right training, the right onboarding, the right day-to-day -day systems. And we ended up having to let go of three-fourths of our company all in one day and have to restart halfway through our journey. And I want to make sure that none of you go through that. Um, and so at that time, what we did was we brought in a mentor that had built multiple multi-million dollar companies based off of phone sales. And it actually, he didn't come from real estate. He came from a different industry. And when he came in, I paid him a lot of money to come mentor my team and rebuild how we manage and build scale and scale sales teams from the ground up. And he made me realize that one of the most important assets to that team is your phone system. So I don't know um, what phone systems everyone's using in here. Feel free to throw it in the chat and we can talk about it at the end. But ultimately, um, for example, let's say you use either your cell phone or a system like CallRail or whatever, and they're hand dialing the phone number. Obviously, this is not productive. So imagine the difference between one person who's very skilled on your team and giving them, say, a phone system where you have to hand dial versus a phone system that can click to call really fast or one that you can make views and say Podio and then it can connect a dialer system into your phone, into your, into your uh, CRM system. And then you can like four line plus dial leads and follow up within your system. So now all of a sudden you took one closer on your staff that used to make maybe 50 dials a day using a system like CallRail, and now they can make hundreds of dials a day sheerly from upgrading your phone system. So now instead of having 12 salespeople, I can have five salespeople doing two to three times the revenue because of the productivity the phone system created for them. So the phone system, if you are doing all of your deals over the phone, we lock up 95% of our deals over the phone. So our phone system is their number one asset that drives productivity. One of the biggest things that we see, um, for example, and we can get into this more in a minute, is we see a lot of companies, unfortunately, track things like talk time and dial count. And not that you shouldn't track them. As leaders, we should still track them on the back end. But from a acquisition man manager perspective, if say you're holding them accountable, hypothetically, to 80 dials a day and two hours of talk time. What do you think they're going to focus on? They're going to focus on getting the most dials and the highest talk time versus getting quality conversations and the highest conversions. So we want to make sure that they're tracking things that are the most important things that move the needle forward and tracking dial count and talk time as their main KPI is not productive for them in the role. 
That doesn't mean that you shouldn't track it on your own reporting and pay attention to red flag indicators, but don't have your actual sales team members being held accountable for that on the daily basis, or that's what they're going to focus on. And to piggyback off of this, imagine if you are an acquisition person and you have a minimum expectation of, let's just say a hundred dials at the end of every day. And if you don't hit your hundred dials, you're going to have to sit down with your manager the next morning. Now, let's say you had a ton of great conversations that day, but for whatever reason, because you've been on the phone a little longer, you're a little behind on your dial count and you're coming up on the last hour, maybe hour and a half of your shift. And let's say you got to come up with 40, maybe 50 dials. What are you telling yourself in your head? Well, I want to make sure that I don't have that tough conversation with my manager tomorrow. I'm going to go call everyone in the system that's most likely not going to answer the phone because they're focused on that dial count and not really moving the needle towards what really matters, which is getting deals signed. So you want to make sure that you're incentivizing your team to have the quality conversations because those quality conversations are going to lead to offers, which will then lead to deals. So let's talk about marketing. All right. So um, every seller out there, they all look at things in a different way. Some maybe watch TV, some open mail, some text, some call. So if you are on here and you're only doing one or two marketing campaigns, in the long term, that will not survive. So as we build up, we need to ensure we diversify our marketing. So we do everything out there, cold calling, texting, direct mail, RVM, Facebook, Google, TV, all that. We do everything. Um, and I think it's really important that you diversify your marketing because not every campaign is going to be profitable every single month sometimes. Now, it will be on the year but maybe not just in the individual month. And sometimes people can't afford to not be profitable for a month. The other thing we have to think about on marketing campaigns is the cash conversion cycle, which we could do a whole nother training on. But I want you, we'll just talk about one campaign. So let's say that I'm launching cold calling and I spend a dollar today. So let's say I launch cold callers. I spend five grand this month on cold calling. To give you an idea of the cash conversion cycle, in our company, keep in mind though, we've been doing this for five to six years. So our uh, cash conversion continues to spread because we land deals off of old leads. So I, once a lead raises their hand and they want to sell off of a cold call lead and it comes into our system, because our phone system is mastering follow-up, it takes an average of 166 days right now for us to land that lead once it comes into the system. Once we land it, it takes 30 to 60 days to wholesale it or four to five months to rehab it. So the cash conversion means that if I spend a dollar today, it takes eight to nine months to actually get a consistent ROI on it. So if I launch cold calling for the first time today, don't think that you're going to get a return on your investment in the first two to three months. You might get lucky and get a couple of deals, but it won't be consistent for eight plus months down the line. And too often I see people in the industry freak out because they spend money today and then they wonder why they're not making money this month, the next month, or the next month. The ultimate answer is your cash conversion cycle. There is an industry standard to every single marketing campaign. So if you're launching PPC, for example, typically your cash conversion is going to be in 30 to 60 days. So it's much faster, but it's a more expensive channel. So we just have to think about the cash conversion per marketing channel so that you can have realistic expectations of when you start to spend money on it, when will I see that return against that money later in the future? So as we talked about before, I want to share with you guys the metrics that we use that we focus on to make sure that we're moving the needle forward. So follow-up specialists on our team or other, um, you might have heard this term, a lead specialist is very similar role. Follow-up specialists are tracking how many pass-offs or live transfers that they have and the number of deals that they're contributing. Our closers or acquisition specialists, they're tracking the number of process calls, which is really a quality conversation, the number of offers that they make and the deals that they're contributing. So one thing you'll notice is they're not tracking dial count, talk time. There's a bunch of other metrics we track in the background, but this is their sole metrics. This is what they're going over every single day in their daily huddle as a team. So it's really important that we focus on what's important that moves the needle forward. I also want you to notice that we give them a career path, and we're going to go over that here in a second, that we have multiple different roles within the company. 
So let's talk a little bit about recruiting. So one thing I want to point out, what we look for on our team is three simple things. First and foremost, you have to be a culture fit, uh, meaning that we share core values. If we don't share core values and we're not in alignment there, it's just not going to work long term. So let's not even waste each other's time. Secondly, we need to make sure that we're bringing someone onto our team that's coachable. I don't know if anyone in here has ever hired someone. Actually, if you have hired someone, maybe uh, say uh, one in the chat or something like that. Give us an idea of how many, how many of you in here um, have a, a team, a small team. But ultimately, the reality is you don't want to bring someone into your company that thinks that they know it all. They're not going to be coachable. They're going to create resistance and frustration. That's the last thing that you want. And third of all, you need someone who's hungry, focused on personal development. And the questions that I ask in an interview to find out if someone's hungry and growth oriented is, are you reading books? Are you listening to podcasts? Are you in the gym every single day? Are you eating right? If you're focused on these things, there's a chance that you're, uh, you're growth focused. And if you're focusing on being the best version of yourself, there's a chance that you want to be the best salesperson as well. So anyone who has these three things on, uh, whenever they come into our office for an interview, they got a spot on our team. I know um, at our two-day workshop, we have a lot of people that come in. They come to the two-day, see how we, we build our teams, all that. And we actually have quite a few people that walk away and they're like, oh my gosh, I have this toxic person on my team. He stresses me out. He's always blaming the leads or showing up late or all these things. Um, these are things that absolutely need to be weeded out in the interview process and ensure that you have your core values up on a banner in your office. And every single core value should be discussed in that interview process. Another thing I want to point out um, as we go into the recruiting piece here is we absolutely do not recruit people that are already in real estate. That is really important. I see too many people think, oh, this guy was, wants to be a wholesaler someday or, oh, this agent you know, wants to learn how to do this. Absolutely not. When you have the best onboarding and training in the industry, you can take anyone flipping pizzas, burgers, it doesn't matter. Our top closers right now that produce over 100,000 a month, one of them was in an eyeglass shop, the other one was a contractor, and the third one was doing cleaning before this. So I'm telling you, when you get good uh, people that are coachable and hungry and you have really good onboarding and training, you can turn anyone into a closer as long as they fit into your core values, they're coachable and they're hungry. So let's talk about the recruiting process. First, we do a phone interview. Um, we actually use a recruiting firm now, but we used to also do it in-house where we screen them out on the phone interview. So the phone interview is like, hey, here's the hours, here's um, how the expectations of the role. And we go over the basics just to make sure, hey, if the hours don't even work for you, let's not even go past the, the phone interview. Um, then we get to the Zoom interview. And before I get to that, one of the biggest things we do on all four interviews is we illustrate the career path of what it's like to work with us. So unlike other companies, and I don't know what it is about our industry, but for some reason, someone must have started education years ago and said, hey, here's a script, here's some training videos, you're getting 10% commission. That shit is not going to keep people. Um, you really need to illustrate, illustrate a career path of moving up within the company, or you're not going to retain them. They're going to be, what's the number one thing that you hear in interviews of why people leave a career is because they feel like they don't, they can't grow within their career with them. So we need to illustrate this path of getting to more money, you know, if they want to change titles, et cetera. So we have um, five roles. I think it's on this real quick. It's the follow-up specialist. They come in at a base in commission. After 10 deals close, they go to a senior follow-up specialist and they, their uh, tier structure increases. They go to a closer, has a quarterly tier structure with a base, and then a senior closer has a higher base with a quarterly tier, and then they can become a team lead. And it's very clear to them when they come into the interview of how they hit every one of these promotions. So during this interview process, in all the interviews, we describe, hey, here are the five key ways to get moved up. Here's how you hit those goals. Here's what a performer looks like. So we, when they come to the in-person interview, which I'll get to in a minute, we actually on a whiteboard already have out every one of those roles, what the minimum expectation, the average performer and a high performer is making in each one of those roles. So they can visualize, okay, if I'm hitting the 
bare ass minimum expectations of each one of these roles, how much money am I making? Because if you're not hitting that, you won't be working here anyways. So that's shown in the in-person interview. We also described the 30, 60, 90 day expectations in those interviews. So a couple things, we wanna make sure they understand, hey, you're gonna be on a phone all day. Are you okay sitting at a desk, being on a phone, making hundreds of dials? The big thing with that is, I don't know if any of you have hired people, but we've made the mistake in the past. We bring them in and a week later, they're like, wait, I have to be on the phone all day. I thought I was going to be like shaking hands and doing other things. I can't sit here like this. So make sure that your 30, 60, 90 day expectations and what the job looks like is clear when you're interviewing. So in that 30, 60, 90, it's like, here's exactly what you have to hit by 30, 60 and 90 days. And if you don't hit it, you're not performing. And we want to make sure that they are signing off, understanding that in every interview so that it's not unknown when they come into the role. We also ask core value questions in every single interview, because I want to make sure that we understand, are they going to fit into my culture? Because the culture is the number one priority in my office. One thing I get asked a lot is, how do I feel about virtual people versus in-house? I don't care either way what you do, but I can tell you that building a superior culture is way easier when your closers are in the office. If you walk into my office at any point of any day, you could open the door and it's like, I don't know, like you walk into a locker room at halftime of a winning game because it's full of energy, music is going, people are rowdy, high-fiving, making offers, and you don't get that environment if you keep people trapped in rooms with four walls. So not that I'm saying that you can't virtual, we have a couple people that are virtual, but the closers are physically located in my office so that we can create this winning environment every day. And one of the biggest things that our sales mentor at the time had taught us was being a sales leader is also a big part of that is managing energy. And you manage energy by creating an amazing culture surrounding people. We also talk about uh, a little bit about W2 1099. I don't want to get too deep into this, um, but eventually I want to make sure that people know that if you um, provide training, expectations, equipment, all that, they need to be a W2, not a 1099. The other big thing is um, if you make someone a 1099, which I see frequently in our industry, for some reason, people are afraid of payroll taxes, but the reality is you're asking someone to be an entrepreneur on day one of working with you. So you're asking them to think like an entrepreneur instead of be bought into your vision as an employee of the company. And you're going to end up likely losing them as a 1099 at some point versus keeping them as a W-2. And it's way more expensive to turn over employees um, versus keeping them and paying payroll taxes. So we do the Zoom interview. Um, that's only like 20 minutes long. And the goal of the Zoom interview is to make sure, are they good again with the hours? Are they a core value fit? Can I get along with this person on a Zoom? So that way we don't waste time on an in-person interview. From there, if we feel like they would be a good fit culturally, we bring them into an in-person interview. One thing I want to point out about the in-person interview is we're going to be asking questions again about, are they growth oriented? Are you listening to podcasts, reading books in the gym, things like that. And then the coachability piece, this is where we're able to find out if someone is coachable or not. And what we do is we actually put them on the phone with sellers that are in our system live. And the goal is that I want to teach them pieces of our script, throw them on the phone. I want to see if they can implement it immediately. And then I want to give them coaching points every single time they talk to someone. And what I'm looking for is, are they taking those coaching points and are they implementing them? Or do I have to continue to say the same thing over and over and over again? The goal is that they talk to five sellers on the phone when they're in this in-person interview. Now think of it this way. This is showing them what the day-to-day -day looks like. There's nothing hitting. I'm, I'm not selling you a false stream. In fact, I want to give you all the information that you need to make a confident decision on whether or not you see yourself not only doing this role, but enjoying it. And then I'm also test driving you as, as, a, uh, as a potential employee. Again, making sure that you are coachable and that you're able to implement everything that I'm coaching you on. So again, in the in-person interview, we're reiterating core values, doing interview questions, which actually at the end of this presentation, if you guys stay till the end, we're gonna give you a QR code where it'll send you all of our interview questions that we do in the interview process and the entire agenda of what we follow. So that'll be at the end. 
Now, let's say that we think this person could be a good fit. From there, we let our team do a lunch or a happy hour, whatever this person's available for, because ultimately I want to make sure that they fit into the culture. The culture is the number one thing we focus on. I can make anyone a good closer as long as they fit into the culture. So they take them to lunch or happy hour and then they come back and say, yeah, we like them or we don't. So that's how we make sure that, hey, our team also wants you, not just us. Again, the career path. Um, another thing that we do outside of their base pay and commission structures is we do a team bonus, which has been one of the most successful things we implemented in the last couple of years. So last year, for example, um, in actually quarter four of 2019, we launched a year long team bonus for 2021 or wait, 20, yeah, yeah, whatever. We launched a big team bonus in 2021 and we said, hey, if we hit this amount by December 31st, everyone on the sales team gets bonus the same amount and it was very sizable. Now there were rules to that bonus. You had to be employed at the company still. There was no prorations if you left. You had to hit minimum expectations at the company month in and month out for all the months. And um, you also had to be at, like, like I said before, you had to be at the company the entire time. So if they left, they don't get paid it. So what does that help? It helps sustain people, not have turnover. It also created this massive team environment because as long as they were hitting their minimum expectations, if they wanted to pass it to the best closer or someone else they felt would close that deal better, they worked as a team because the payout on the team bonus was so big that they just wanted to get to the team bonus the fastest they could. So as long as they could hit it as fast as they wanted. So they actually ended up hitting it by July. So they got paid out that bonus in July instead of waiting till December. So it made them have one vision because at the end of the day, guys, your sales team should be bought in on one vision that's revolved around your revenue because that's what they drive. So whatever that revenue goal is, let's just hypothetically say it was a million dollars in revenue. You should be giving them some type of incentive that has one vision. And so every week at your team meeting, you're updating them against the quarter, the week, and where are they at against that big vision that gets the team bonus? Because they always, every week, they're like, where are we at? Where are we at against the team bonus? We can't wait to hit this team bonus. Onboarding. So I'll, I want to. One thing I want to cover real quick the biggest thing we see in our industry that I think a lot of programs are failing on, and it's not just with acquisitions, is no one is effectively onboarding. No one. And so uh, we have built our program on the education side around teaching you guys how to onboard and train effectively when building a team, because without structure, you won't survive. And so if you look at how the military takes regular civilians and turns them into highly performing uh, people in the military. Or think about when we were babies. The only way that a baby really thrived as they grew up was around structure and routine. Um, and so coming from a corporate past, when I came into this industry, I saw too much in the industry of trainings that people would be like, here's a script and some training videos, go watch them and then let's shadow me and start performing. That will not be effective and you will get salespeople to be inconsistent and it's sheerly from a lack of onboarding. So in our company, we have an entire five minimum days plus of onboarding before you ever touch a phone. And it is involved around, and we're going to go over the details, but of video recordings, onboardings, quizzes, assessments, expectations, and then we quiz and assess you against what are you retaining or what are you not before we ever just throw you on a phone. Yeah, to Tiff's point, we as human beings naturally thrive in structured environments. So it's our duty, it's our responsibility as a leader in order to put our anyone on our team in a position to be successful, we have to have clear-cut, uh, structured onboarding. So we have five days of onboarding uh, for anyone that comes onto our sales team. And I want to go over some of the things that we cover in that onboarding. So one thing real quick is day one of onboarding we always wanna make sure we have the right HR paperwork. Some of the most expensive mistakes I've ever made were because I didn't put the right paperwork in place from an HR perspective. We take for granted too of making sure they have the desk set up, the gear, two screens, the right phone system, everything. Then we go over the agenda. We have it printed for them. We have a day by day, hour by hour agenda printed for them explaining, hey, this is what we're gonna do over the next five days. 
We also are going to assign a very clearly defined 30, 60, 90 day expectation so that we're both on the same page of where they should be along the next 30, 60, 90 day journey in, at the company. So it's very clear on what they should be hitting. There's no loose ends. And then we sign a compensation plan that's clearly defined with the pay structure and bonus structure with several examples under it so that they clearly understand how they get paid, when they get paid, how they hit these structures, et cetera. So the rest of the five-day onboarding schedule, some things that we cover are our ideal customer profile. So one thing I see a lot of people in our industry lack when they go to bring someone onto their team, that new team member, they don't understand the types of situations where we add a lot of value. They don't understand, um, it, you know, for a foreclosure, for example, that this is our ideal customer because we can bring a ton of value to this person. And it doesn't matter what someone's asking price might be in that situation. If I can bring a lot of value to this prospect outside of price, now all of a sudden the price becomes negotiable. I see a ton of people in our industry are so price oriented and you're walking away from deals because you don't understand the situations that you can add the most value to. So knowing and understanding what our ideal customer profile looks like is the first thing that we cover. Then we dive into sales psychology. It's very important that we understand the science behind everything in our script. I'm not just throwing you a script and saying, hey, go read it to every seller you get on the phone. No, let's understand why we're saying it and understand the strategy behind it. Now, when I put the script in front of you, all of a sudden, you know, and you understand why things are framed the way that they are. You understand why we're asking certain questions and saying things the way that, that we want to say them. Another thing is we, ha we have a crystal clear sales process. It's check the box type of process, meaning every single time I get on the phone with someone, I can now hold my team accountable because I can go back and say, hey, did you, did you do your introduction? Did you set expectations? Did you uncover their motivation? So on and so forth. Uh, this allows us to bring coachability or coaching and accountability into uh, the sales process. And because it's coachable and accountable, it's also scalable. Now, the next thing that we talk about is we, we actually teach our team on the components of a house. We teach them enough to be dangerous, to know and understand how to underwrite a deal and become so good that they're plus or minus five, maybe 10% on any repair estimate based on, the uh, based on the conversation they have with a seller on the phone. I see a ton of wholesalers in our industry that they, they lock up these deals and they shoot out this house at a price that just doesn't make sense because they don't understand these types of things. They don't understand the components of a house and what all is needed to get that house up to the market condition. So that's something that we coach on and we're very big on this. Another thing is um, we don't, we also are big about training our acquisitions team, all of the exit strategies. So they understand our buyer base. A lot of um, programs out there will say, Hey, go at Zillow times a percent minus a fee. And they make an offer that way. And that is not effective at all. You'll be walking away from tons of deals if you do that. So really good. We get dive deep into, again, all the components, the roof, the flooring, understanding different plumbing issues. Um, how to understand the maximum allowable offer by running the right comparables. Um, and then understanding exit strategies. Too often we see a lot of people in the industry just wholesaling. Yeah, that helps you maybe get started, create some cash flow. But ultimately, as you're spending marketing dollars, one of the biggest things we tell people is you should be spending about 15 to 20% of your uh, projected revenue in marketing. So let's just hypothetically to keep it even, we want to make 100 grand this month. You should be spending about 20,000 in marketing. You want to make 50 grand, you spend 20% of that. And ultimately, there's going to be a lot of deals that if you don't learn how to rehab eventually or wholesale, you're walking away from a deal that that's the only way that it's a deal. So let's just say it doesn't make sense as a wholesale. You'll be walking away from a $20,000 deal if we can't take it down and at least list it. So some other things that we cover is just knowing and understanding specific industry lingo. One thing that's really important in any sales conversation is our prospects have to have a level of certainty that we're an expert in our field. And if we don't understand tenant situations, for example, or what a purchase agreement is and what it even means, then our prospects are going to have no confidence in us being an expert in our field. So this is very important, as well as other tools that we're going to be using on a day-to-day, -day, like our CRM, our phone systems, how to run comps, using tools like DocuSign or other forms of e-signature. 
Um, again, the industry documents, and, uh, and we actually have a video uh, training on our purchase agreement that goes through word by word, paragraph by paragraph, what everything means. That way, if a, if a seller ever has a question about why a certain section is in our purchase agreement, they can then confidently answer that and increase their ability to make the seller feel 100% comfortable with moving forward. The last thing that we have is I want to talk about this tool uh, using flashcards. We've actually created a form of flashcards that helps us uh, identify how much information or test how much information this our, our new hire has retained in the onboarding process. Now, after they go through, they fill out these flashcards, we're able to coach them up on anything that might be wrong. And the goal is now all of a sudden, when we go through that, after it's all said and done, now our new team member has a, a study tool that they can use. They can show up every single day, 10, 15, or 20 minutes early, and they can go through these flashcards and continue to perfect their craft. So in our, um, we have a login for all of these training videos for our um, acquisitions guys. And we actually, for every major section, we have an assessment and flashcards that they have to pass the test before they can go on to the next section. If they don't pass, they have to start back up and go through it again. Let's talk about the leadership side of things. So we talked about earlier the fact that culture is the most important thing. It's our responsibility for leaders to create a culture that is then going to drive the results that we want. One thing that we talk a lot about in our office is the fact that winning is a habit. We believe that you don't just show up and start closing deals. Instead, it's a lifestyle. And what I mean by that is you have to be focusing on being the best version of you in every area of your life. If you're on point in the gym, you're focused on uh, feeding your mind with podcasts and books and you're eating right. When you walk into work, guess what? You're going to win. You're going to close deals because you're focused on being the best version of you outside of work. And when you're in the office, you're continuing to laser focus on perfecting your craft in the office. So leaders create culture and our culture drives results. So one thing that we can do to help create this culture is, again, going back to that structure that's required for us as human beings to thrive, we have to have a meeting rhythm. We have to have a meeting rhythm with weekly meetings and daily meetings. We have a weekly team meeting where we all align as an organization. Then we have one-on-ones with each individual every single week on our team. In these one-on-ones, we're talking about our metrics. We're talking about our expectations. We're identifying, hey, are you at least hitting minimum expectations? If you are not, then we have to have a conversation in that meeting. If you are, great. Now let's talk about, are you eating? Or are you meeting your individual goals? If you're not, okay, let's have a conversation about it. how do we get back on track? And if you are, great, let's continue doing what we're doing. I see so many people in our industry, if they even do hire someone, they never, ever, ever meet with them. And the reality is you're not doing your part as a leader to put them in a position to be successful. You have to create the structured environment that we as human beings need to thrive. Now, on a daily basis, we have daily huddles. For our sales team, for example, we have a huddle for them and we go over a short agenda. Every meeting starts with gratitude in our office. We talk about things that we're grateful for. We talk about our metrics from the day before. We go over any sellers that we feel we could put in contract this week. And the last thing that we do is we do a daily sales training. I would argue with anyone that I feel our daily sales training is the, is the number one reason why our team has become so consistent. And I see people across the country implementing it the way that we've implemented it, and they're seeing the same results. Really, what we've done is we've taken the sales process, we've identified four fundamentals, four fundamentals that if we were experts at these four things, we could close any closable deal that crosses our desk. And what we do is we pick one of those fundamentals and we focus on that for the entire week. I see a ton of people, if they even are doing daily sales training, they have Grant Cardone up one day on YouTube and then they got Jordan Belford up the next and then the next sales guru and the next sales guru. And the reality is every single one of those guys has their own philosophies and it's all information in one year and out the other because it, those tactics never, ever, ever get, actually get implemented. So instead, let's identify the fundamentals that we want to be experts in. Let's focus on that fundamental for the entire week. And let's make sure that we are true masters. It's almost like Michael Jordan. You know, Michael Jordan, arguably the best basketball player of all time. He still showed up to practice every day and was shooting free throws. He would still warm up doing layups. He would still do dribbling drills. Why are we any different? We're not. We need to treat ourselves and our, and, uh, our role 
as a professional athlete would. We need to show up every single day and be laser focused on being the best version of us. Yeah, one of the big things with our meetings is we have a very strict agenda in every meeting in the company and the same agenda gets followed at every meeting every single day. And a big thing I want to make sure is that you're never skipping them. I see a lot of guys, even if you're running around with your heads cut off, you cannot skip regular meeting routines. It's what keeps the company consistent. It keeps communication streamlined between you and your team. And even if it's just you and then you and one person, never skip your meeting structure. So a big thing that we wanna make sure we just, a great system allows talent to shine rather than requiring that talent to overcome the lack of a system. I think that's really important. Take a picture of that because too many people in the industry, that's where they don't have a system. They don't have onboarding. They don't have tools built. And so they just bring people in, scramble, and they're reactive to how they train and onboard. And then the next person comes in and then they make the same mistakes over and over and over. So putting a great system in place and don't recreate the wheel. People like us and other people in the industry have different systems already built for key roles and don't recreate the wheel. They're already out there working for other teams. Um, so just make sure that you guys understand that a system is what creates results. And again, it's very, very, very important that before you make your first hire, that you have this system outlined and ready to go because that's what's gonna set anyone that you bring onto your team up for success. Um, so Tangier, are you on here? Um, so this is a QR code guys. Um, if, if you go to it and put in your email, then it will download the interview agenda and questions that we do throughout our recruiting process. Um, we also wanted to cover, and I'll bring this back up here in a second. Um, we actually have a couple of different things in our education side. Um, so first, we have what we call the virtual group. The virtual group is the virtualgroup.com, um, and that is four weeks live with us. They're all recorded. Uh, actually, tomorrow is week one for May. They're normally on Thursdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, and it's integral that I always say, I don't care if you're doing one deal a month or 20 deals a month, there's always something to clean up in our foundation, our processes, our systems, and before we go build a massive team, we want to make sure that our front line is cleaned up first. So week one and week two, we go over all of our systems, our phone system, how we have it set up, how it flows, all of our marketing campaigns in detail. And we have our tech developer on there. So in case you have technical questions, he can answer them live for you. Week three, Josh gets on and talks about the phone sales script process over the phone. And then week four, we go over all of our dispo processes. So the virtual group, again, is very fundamental to how we run the front end. And then the two-day workshop, which the next one's in June, um, again, the two-day is not for newbies, but it's for people who have already done some deals. But then it teaches, we get about 70% of that event is how we recruit, onboard, and manage the day-to-day -day of our sales team. And then we re-go over the marketing system, phone flows, and all that, along with our dispo processes. But the two day is really revolved when you walk in the door, we onboard you as if you're one of our new sales employees. So you see the level of detail in the onboarding process that we implement with people, which I think is really integral, especially if you're getting ready to hire your first acquisition person, whether it's your first or your 10th, it doesn't matter. To see how we effectively onboard and train our salespeople is really important. And we cover most of that at the two day workshop. Tiffany, is your screen blinking back and forth? Okay, I just stopped. There you go. A uh, couple people went on the chat and said that the QR code is not working. Um, a few people said that. Can you call Christina? Okay. The QR code um, takes you to a page that says no page matching this path. So that's like four. There's four people so far that said it's not working. Okay. Um, if you could just email um, heelshomes at gmail.com. Uh, Krizel, can you put that in the chat box and they can email us and we'll send it to them manually. Heelshomes at gmail.com. Yep. H-E-E-L-S homes, H-O-M-E-S at gmail.com. Okay. Now, did you want to open it up to Q&A, Tiff? Yep. Before we do that, I am going to have you, I'm going to have you reshare your screen in just a second, but um, I need to show our pricing. Oh, you want me to stop sharing okay. Yeah, a lot of people want to know the pricing because I, I told them in the end, you know, that we were going to offer bonuses and stuff like that. 
And one of the bonuses we here at Park Closures Daily are going to offer to if anybody that mentions you on here is going to get a free county by Friday if they purchase data. So between now and Friday, anybody that mentions the fact that they saw us on this webinar is going to get a free county. Um, it's a buy one county, get one free. And even when we run those specials throughout the year, it's never on discounted rate with your, with your discounts. It's always on list price, but we're actually going to do that on a discounted rate. So if they want, let's say, six months of foreclosures daily uh, probate, it's going to be $999. And if they want another six months uh, for another county for probate, it's typically half off. But till Friday, they do get it for free. So it's $599 for three months, which is 12 weeks. It's $999 for six months, which is 26 weeks, or $1,750 for a year. That's one county each list. So if they want probate and pre-probate, it'd be $999 times two. Uh, we're only going to give them the free county, Tiffany, if they make a six-month commitment or the year. And I know that you and Josh will agree. The reason why we're pushing longer commitments is, like you said earlier in the beginning of y'all's uh, Zoom, it's important, you know, to work it longer and expect results later, not right this second. You know, not that it can't happen. I've had people mail on a Wednesday. Uh, the person gets the mail on a Saturday and calls them over for a contract to be signed on Sunday. It can happen that quick. She's right, but not consistently until you work it. So working it longer, stronger, harder is important. It tends to produce results and, and show results for you and give your list time to produce and function. So if they buy any of these lists, this is the price for each of them, $5.99 for three months. If they do $9.99 or $17.50 for six months or a year, they do get that free county. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop my share, but all they have to do is go to foreclosuredaily.com, uh, put down that they saw us on this webinar, and they'll get that 20 to 30% discount with that free county if they make a six month commitment. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say. I wanna go ahead and stop my share though so you can reshare your screen. Yeah, um, I don't know if Dylan on here, I don't know how the chat box works, but if um, if you guys will try to fix this, but if not, um, if my team could put in the Podio web form, they could fill that out. So if anyone is interested, just fill that out instead and we'll make sure that we send everything to you guys directly and reach out. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, if you guys want to maybe name off some questions that they have, Tandy. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and open up live Q&A. We do have a, a few questions on here. Have you, um, your, can you go back and forth on your screen again? There you go. It, it, it's for some reason it just keeps glitching. Have you guys heard of close.io, close.io, close? And if so, what are your thoughts as a CRM and phone system? Uh, no, we are not. We don't know anything about close.io. And, you know, and they wanted to know your thoughts on a CRM and phone system. I think you guys went over that yeah. earlier. Yeah. So we, um, we have a custom Podio build out. Uh, we actually uh, go over the entire seller lead flow of how everything works in the virtual group training. So we're not like we, you guys could pay to copy my Podio if you wanted, but I don't care if you have Salesforce, Podio, whatever it is. One of the biggest things I want you to pay attention to in that training is how the actual seller lead flows with the acquisition team because you could technically replicate that exact flow and whatever system you might have as long as you, as long as you guys can customize it. Okay, so guys, now is your chance to ask questions. You've got Tiffany and Josh for the next 20 minutes or so, and, and now is the time to ask any questions. I know there's quite a few people on this call, and, and anytime I've ever seen anybody have no questions, it's usually because you guys did such a great job explaining everything, but right, basically what you're saying, on your two-day workshop is where they're gonna learn all of that stuff you're talking about, correct? Yeah, we at the at the virtual group is around all of our systems, marketing, flows, phone setup, everything like that. Our phone sales script process, it's a thousand dollars. It's um what we do it week monthly at the start end. It's four weeks live. If anyone on here mentions that they're with Tangie's webinar and they qualify to come to the two day, we will give you the virtual group for free for being on here. Um, so that'll be something that we can cover on the phone. Again, the two day workshop though, is not for newbies that it's really meant for someone that's already got some deals done. Um, I see some other questions on here. Yeah. Before we get into that, I wanted to say just, wow. I mean, when I yeah. was, I usually don't listen the whole entire time the webinar is going on because I'm doing other things in the background, admin duties and stuff, but I couldn't keep my eyes unglued to the screen. Mm -hmm. I can't believe how much content you guys gave away. It's like, oh my God, it just blew my mind. You guys trained so much. And usually people put out teasers here and there, but you guys just divulge so much information in such a small amount of time. I just couldn't believe how much I learned on the call myself today. So thank you for that. 
Yeah, I um I wanted to make sure we added a ton of value, you guys. If, ask any question you guys want, we will give you the direct answer. And again, the two day though is where we really cover the entire onboarding process, et cetera. If you want to know more around the systems, marketing details, phone flows, the virtual group is really where that's at, which is the virtual group.com. Okay. Now um do the closers track the metrics themselves or is that tracked by the team lead and what are you tracking it with? Yeah, so what we do is our Podio actually tracks all these metrics individually. And then what they do is they take it from our CRM and they plug it into a shared Google Drive. The reason why we do that is because yeah, I could automate all of this and it'd be really sexy, really cool. But the reality is if it's out of sight, then it's out of mind. And I don't want it to be out of mind. Instead, I want my team, every individual to go take those metrics, see them, put them onto the shared drive so they could see everyone else's metrics and now all of a sudden there's like a, a, a sense of peer pressure. If someone's maybe lacking on their leading indicators, then maybe the next day they show up, oh man, this guy and this guy are doing better than I am. I got to step it up, right? And that's the attitude I want them to have. But if it's all automated, again, it's out of sight and out of mind. And I want to make sure that they know where they are at all times. How are you structuring close closer, pay structure, commission, and bonus? Um, and let me actually... If you want to give me a second, I'll just show you a, uh, let me bring it up real quick. Go ahead and just show you exactly how we do it. So this is um, what our pay structure looks like if you guys want to take a picture. So essentially the fault specialist comes in at a $2,000 base with 3% commission. Once they get the first 10 deals closed at the company, Assuming they do it in the right timeline, their base or their commission goes to 5%. And now the follow-up specialist does not close deals. They pass, um, they make sure that someone's motivated and wants to sell, and then they pass it live to a closer. The closers have a $2,000 base and a quarterly commission tier of 6, 8, and 10% that we do. And then a senior closer means that you have hit minimum expectations for at least six months and your base gets increased to 3000 and then you can become a team lead as well in the future if we feel you have leadership skill set. Um, again, team bonus has really got to be to what you guys do in specific. So let's just, I'm just going to make this up, but let's just say um, you're going to spend 20,000 on marketing a month and you have your operations budget met. And that's what you're guiding out for the next 12 months. And so your team has to hit at least 100,000 a month, which is 1.2 million. You can say, hey guys, the goal this year is 1.2 million and you have until December 31st to hit it. But if you hit it by July or whatever the fastest is that you hit it is when you get paid out whatever bonus you feel comfortable giving them. You guys can structure it however you want, but if you do something similar to that, it'll create this team environment that creates them on one page to hit a common goal. You know, to Tiff's point, one thing I see a lot in our industry or even sales in general, um, everyone is fighting each other for leads. Like, oh, it's my lead and hoarding the leads and, and not letting anyone know about anything that's going on with the, their leads. On our team, nobody owns any leads. In fact, we're all working together towards one common goal, which is closing deals. I don't want one acquisition person to hold back information from another just because they're being selfish. And maybe that one acquisition person just doesn't have what it takes to build a relationship with that type of a person. I want them to work together to close the opportunity and say, hey, you know, man, I missed, I missed out on this opportunity. You should go call them and, and, and uh, see if you can work something out. The reality is we're all working towards one goal and we're all on the same team. So one thing I want to point out about what he said is, I'm going to reiterate this. Nobody owns a lead in my company. So let's say I get off the call and I put them in a follow-up category. The way that our phone systems are set up is we actually have a dialer embedded into our CRM. So let's just say every seller, I'm making this up, but is, that's in follow-up for today. That's one view in Podio and the dialer system is connected to that view. And we all, we'll have someone on that dialer campaign that day. And it doesn't matter if five different people were attached to those leads. We have a follow-up specialist that's mass following up. And whenever someone's ready to get closed, we pass them to whatever closer is available. The only time someone actually owns a lead in our system is if it's in a status called set offer. And that means that they're literally in the process of taking them to make an offer. If they don't accept it, they go back into a mass follow-up flow that we have set up. But before and after, if before and after uh, uh, offer, 
there's no lead manager that actually owns the lead. So for example, let's say I call someone, I put them into follow-up. I'm not the only person responsible for that follow-up because if I'm here for three plus years at this company, there's no way in hell I can keep up with thousands of leads in my personal name. So if you're doing that, I'm telling you, you're missing out on opportunity and you're creating this environment within your team where people are gonna be protective over their leads. It's not their leads, it's the company's leads. So we wanna treat it that way. Okay, how customizable does a CRM need to be? And what examples can you give us on what to do that need to be customizable? Um, I mean, I can give you a lot of examples, but ultimately we have a custom built Podio. Um, you guys are welcome to copy it if you want. You can reach out to us on your Podio web form that, are, that the team sends you and we can put you in touch with our developer. But ultimately the big thing is, for example, um, when we started doing one from one rehab a month to 10 rehabs a month, we needed a rehab section built. When we grew our team out bigger, we needed certain sections built out for custom to the team. We started raising millions of dollars. So we built a private lender section. Like that's why if you have a subscription, you have to be careful because it might cap your growth and uh, the, your ability to adapt to what you continue to do over the course of time. What is the role of a follow-up specialist and do they analyze deals and make offers too? So follow-up specialists do not analyze deals. They do not make offers. Really the role of a follow-up specialist is to touch base with people and qualify or disqualify opportunities. So when we get a seller on the phone, they have a basic script that goes through our qualification process and they're able to determine very quickly in less than three to five minutes, if this is a qualified opportunity or not. If it's qualified, they're live transferring it to a closer to go through our sales process. If it's disqualified, it's being put into a follow-up sequence. What phone system Podio integration do you recommend for click to call So we have a phone system that Podio actually owns um, called Smartphone. But before you just go sign up for it, the most important thing is not just getting the phone system, but understanding how to hook up the phone system and mm -hmm. use it the right way. Right. Um, actually, the way I think of this is almost like a contractor. What good is a contractor that has all the right tools, but doesn't know how to use them? If you have a drill and you don't know how to use the drill or a nailer and you don't know how to use the nailer to its full capacity, then you're limited to, You're limited as a contractor. It's no different. Yeah, we're telling you all the tools that we have, but it's how we use them that's so important. Yep. So we'll go over all that in the virtual group and the two-day. We'll literally go down and break down every single campaign on the dialer, how we have the phones flowing. You know, if, if for every marketing campaign, how does the inbound call happen? Who's answering it? How's it getting moved throughout the team? All that kind of stuff. Now you said if you're a newbie, don't sign up for the two day, but what do they sign up for if they are a newbie? Um, I will talk to my team on that. The virtual group is really where you wanna start. The, just keep in mind, um, the one thing I wanna be clear on is that we don't teach how to get a purchase agreement signed, what escrow is, none of that. That's all very basic stuff you can learn on YouTube. Um, our virtual group is literally how our system flows, how the marketing campaigns work, how our sales script process works over the phone, all of that. So I just wanna make sure that you guys all understand that it does not teach you the basics of escrow and closing the actual deal. Did you explain the price of the virtual group? I think that you should let them know. Yeah, that's the virtual group, affordable. if you're a newbie, is really affordable and that's really where you should start. Um, it's only $9.97, it's $1,000 and it's called thevirtualgroup.com. Um, and we can send that out to y'all. That's really where I would start if you're a newbie um, or only like got one or two deals under your belt because in reality, you have to get your systems and your sales script process down before ever thinking about building a team. Well, when the 997, what does that cover? Like how long is that for? So it's four weeks live with us. It's typically the first four Thursdays of the month at 12 p.m. Eastern. Um, for, this, for the month of May, we're actually having week one tomorrow at noon. So week one and week two, we cover all of our, again, our phone systems, our CRM, our flows, every single marketing campaign and how they work along with process flow diagrams so that you can see how every single campaign is working. And uh, our Podio developer um, is on there. So if you ever need like your phone system set up or anything like that, he can set that up for you. So you can reach out to him. He can set up whatever things you guys need set up. Um, and then week three, Josh gets on for a couple hours and he goes over our entire script process of how we land the deals on the phone. 
which is critical to understand before you go hire someone. And then week four, we go over all of our dispo processes. Now for the month of May, week one is actually tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern because I'm on vacation Thursday. And then the next three weeks are Thursdays at uh, 12 p.m. Eastern. They're all recorded and stored in the drive for you. So the beauty about that is even though you're gonna be on May's live group, if you say in three months, I always give everyone access to a lifetime of the recording. So let's just say I launch a new marketing campaign and it doesn't work or it works, or I wanna show the data to it, I always go over this live and I'll say, hey guys, anyone in the community, go watch week one. I just launched a new marketing campaign. Check out all the updates that we did. Um, examples, we go over how we use Tangie's data and that, exactly how we market to it on every single marketing campaign, when we hit it, how often we hit it, all that. We go over everything from what data we're using in that as well. Okay, what markets are you guys currently in and do you face any hurdles you can care to speak about um, when expanding to different markets? Yep, so we um, are big believers in going deep instead of wide. So we're only in Columbus, Ohio and Kansas City. We'll probably do four to $5 million in rehabbing and wholesaling this year. Now, I know a lot of people do the national wholesaling model where they go wide with things like PPC. Um, we just personally don't do that. It's much easier to dispo deals when you become experts in those markets versus getting deals every day, all day in various places of the country. Um, so we don't teach the national model. Um, but one of the biggest things I would say is, is before you launch a new city, make sure that you have the proper boots on the ground and the contacts. That's more important than the size of city or anything. So if I launch a city and I go find the right realtor, the right runner, um, the person that can dispo my deals. If I can't dispo them, that's more important than anything else, in my opinion, because as long as you have the right contacts to move a deal, it's better than launching some massive city that everyone talks about if you don't have the contacts. Okay, two questions. Um, one, you mentioned selling more than 40 houses in one year. That's more than three houses per month. Did you have several crews going all at once to flip any of those houses? Absolutely. We had more than so we had several crews on a house at any given time. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't be doable or functionable if we only had one crew on every single house. Yeah. I mean, it would take us six to eight months a pop. So yeah, we have several crews. Um, now we actually have one main GC that we use, but he manages out 15 plus crews himself. Wow. The sales leads for any given county that we are buying for how many other investors are you selling those to? I think that's for us. So basically, we don't have a cap on the limit of people who can use the data, but it's it's such a small amount. The competition is so minimal. A lot of people don't understand probates, pre-probates and stuff like that, and they're scared to work things like that, so they don't. And scared money don't make money. You know that. So, you know, you're lucky if you have two people competing with you in one market. There are, we're across the entire nation. We have none in so many counties. It's pathetic. It's like people are just really scared to work these types of leads because the word probate and death really scares people. So because of that, the competition is very minimal. There are some markets where we might have four or five subscribers competing with you, but there's enough to go around. A lot of people aren't at the scale that Josh and Tiffany are. And a lot of people are go at their own pace and they go a lot slower. And when they get one deal, they'll just stop until they finish it completely and start again. I don't recommend that, but that's just how people are. And that's what happens. So the competition is extremely minimal with these types of leads. You don't have to worry about competition. It's not like the foreclosure industry where everybody's fighting over the same lead and you're trying to find that needle in the haystack. You know, this, the competition is so minimal. You don't have to worry about stuff like that. Hey, Dan, I want to I want to point out two things. If you don't mind me saying this, uh, there's two things that are very important to everything that, that Tangie's talking about right now. First and foremost, if there is competition, you have to make sure that your marketing is on point to where you beat everyone to that opportunity. So the marketing is critical. And secondly, if you're if you are targeting things like probate, you need to know and understand how to approach those conversations. If you have the proper approach, you are going to close those opportunities. Yeah, you want to be different. You know, a lot of people do different things for marketing and stuff like that. And, you know, you don't want to be that basic person. You know, you don't want to offer condolences or sympathy. You don't want to talk about somebody's death. You want to be real simple, basic marketing. So it's you and your marketing and the things that you're going to do that's going to set yourself aside. I have one person that sends out marketing just offering to let them know the value of the home. Their job is just to get their phone ringing. Once it's ringing, you can pretty much do whatever you want. So your job is to reach out and get the phone ringing. And that's how they get the phone ringing. They offer a free market value of the property. 
And when people die, that's the most thing that people want to know is their family members is like, what is the house worth? You know, what can I get for it? So, you know, there's a lot of different unique things you can do with stuff like that. You know, it's like that guy who wanted the job at Google, you know, um, hundreds of thousands of people were going after the same job and he was one of the lesser experienced ones, but because he mailed them a shoe and said, I'm trying to get my foot in the door, you know, he got hired on the spot. You know, you want to do, like Josh said, unique marketing things to get them to reach out to you. So, um, okay, you mentioned raising private money as part of the podio. Do you have a dedicated team for raising private money? Um, no, I raise all the money for the company. Just so you guys know the difference in our roles, Josh oversees sales and construction. I oversee mainly transactions and raising money. So every deal that needs money, I raise the money. Um, I've been raising money for five years. Uh, we've raised millions and millions of dollars from people just like you and me across the country. Um, I raise money through social media, through friends of friends, family members, um, and that's a whole nother topic to go over. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, uh, it's like almost 20 after seven. We, we don't have any lingering questions left. I did have one person ask and that sign up is on the website. What website? I don't know if they're talking about ours or yours, but I think we both should answer that. It's www.foreclosuresdaily.com. If you go to foreclosuresdaily.com and you hit sign up now, it's going to ask you for a special code. And if you were on here and invited by Tiffany and Josh, her code is TB1000 and it will get you 20 to 30% off and it will get you that free county by Friday. Um, it, I got probate list a year ago, but didn't do anything with it. Can I still use it? You know, the thing is, is old leads aren't bad leads. In fact, they're very good. Um, in fact, anytime you have any back data or anything like that, it's important that you still reach out to them. Everybody's going through a situation at certain times. Some probates could take, you know, six weeks, eight weeks, two months, four months, six months, a year. It just depends on the situation they're going through. A lot of people have a misconception about probate. They think you have to go through the whole process before you can take ownership and buy the property. And that's just not true. In most states and counties, you can purchase almost right away. So yeah, the old leads are, could still be good. Some are going to be gone. So it's kind of like some will, so won't, so what? You know, but so you will be marketing to some people who already sold their house, depending on how old your list is, but some people may not and may be ready to um, sell their property now. So it's like striking the iron while it's hot. So you can absolutely still work them. So yeah, I don't um, in terms of the virtual group, this is the website. I just figured I'd type it up real quick. So I, instead of spelling it out, um, it's the virtual group.com. If you want to come to the two day, you have to fill out the web form that's going to get sent to you guys because we don't let just anyone come to that. It's small, it's intimate, it's in my office in Columbus, Ohio. Um, so we qualify people to come to the two day. It only fits 40 people. Um, so on tiffanyandjoshhigh.com is where you can fill out the web form or we'll email it out to all you guys. Um, but the virtual group, you guys can sign up for this. Uh, but again, if you want to come to the two day, uh, you can go to tiffanyandjoshhigh.com and fill out the web form and we will personally call you and make sure that it's a good fit um, and go from there. Did the QR code get fixed? Yeah. It's kind of gone. Um, while you guys are checking that QR code, I do have a question for me on there. Um, basically, you're asking if we have a course to deal with probates. And guys, that's a mistake people make. You want to pay your coaches to learn your job and to learn how to work your business, which is what we have Tiffany and Josh on here for, which is exactly why we put them on here. You don't need to learn how to work the probate or how to go through a divorce. All you're teaching yourself at the end of the day is how to go through your own parents' process when they pass. Listen, if I was your neighbor and I'm out like washing my car and you know I have a property, whether I'm going through divorce, foreclosure, whether I'm going through probate, my situation shouldn't matter to you. What matters is I'm a homeowner who has an extra property I may want to sell, period. It doesn't get any more technical than that. And a lot of people will think this to death, you know, and try to get in their own way of thinking, oh, I need to be trained on the probate process. Even if you were trained, your question's still the same. So Tangie, are you interested in selling your property? You know, when you're going back to court, do you know when the judge is going to release your property? Everything, nothing changes whether you're trained on how to go through the probate process or not, because it's my probate process that I'm going through. I'm the one that knows when I'm going to court and so on and so forth. So getting training is paying your coaches to help you with your job, your systems, your business, in your real estate industry. You don't need to get trained on how to go through a foreclosure, how to go through probate, how to go through a code violation, or how to go through you know, foreclosure. It's not the actual list that you need to get trained on. You need to get trained on your job. If you can get trained on your job and you know how to buy a house, you can purchase any lead in the whole world. Don't think of it as a list or a lead. Just think of it as a human being who has a property they may want to sell. 
So I hope that answers your question. Um, next two days starts in May or June. Uh, we have one May 9th and 10th, which is actually next week. We only have, I think, three seats left. Um, so if you're on here and you actually want to come last minute, you're welcome to. We have three seats. But the next one's June 6th and 7th in our office in Columbus, Ohio. When will be the one after that, they want to know? In July, July 25th and 26th. Okay. Well, any uh, anything you want to say to the audience? Anything um, so... One thing again, since we're on here with Tangi, um, there's a reason why we've been using their data for four or five years. We've actually been using, it was one of the first lists we bought actually, we've never stopped buying them all. Um, we literally market it in every fashion that you think you can market it in. And the big thing about her data, especially the courthouse data, um, I like I refer to it as weekly distress data because it's everything that hits the courthouse. You have to be patient because you have to remember that when you mail someone that's going through probate, divorce, foreclosure, et cetera, you're normally getting her list right when they hit the courthouse. And so they just got hit with a courthouse and they don't even know what the journey is ahead of them. And so I always tell people it takes six to nine months normally to land a, sometimes deals from that list because they have multiple courthouse dates happening. And then it's a matter of timing of when they're ready to sell the property. So follow-up is really key. So I see a lot of guys, especially getting started in the industry, where you'll launch a direct mail list or send out some cold calling and you don't get results within 30 days of mailing that list or whatever. You have to make sure you're consistent with it for six to nine months if it's the courthouse data because it takes time and it's all about timing with that seller on when either the judge demands they sell, they're about to lose their house finally, or maybe the probate's just now finally getting finished. Um, I would say a good majority of our deals come from divorce, probate, and foreclosure. So, um, it, but you have to be patient with the data. So don't buy the data and expect to have an immediate result uh, within 60 days, because that likely is not gonna happen. You have to give it time and consistent marketing. Yeah, you're right, absolutely. And Tiffany brought up a good point. I mean, it does take time for things. I mean, like I said, you could get a, a mailer on a Wednesday and you're landing a deal and signing contracts on a Sunday. I've seen that more than not. I literally had a guy reach out to me Thursday. He's like, Tangie, I cannot believe your probate and pre-probate leads are so legit. He's like, my VA started making calls. Literally her second call, she landed me a $75,000 assignment fee. Guy before like a hundred thousand dollars. And these are on wholesale deals, not even fix and flips. So, I mean, it could happen right away, but like Tiffany said, that's not your consistent part. That's not going to be like your constant everyday thing that may happen. It may be a fluke. You get one or two right away, but you, you got to be consistent. You got to keep the flow going. You don't want to stop. And I hate it when people will use like a three month commitment because in 10 weeks, that's just not long enough to be making a decision on whether or not you want to renew something because you haven't put enough time into the game to know something like that. So people that use a three month commitment and make the decision not to renew always are calling me back up in a couple months going, oh my God, I just landed two deals from what I didn't renew. Now it's like starting all over again when they reach back out to me to renew two months later. It's like, right, now you've got to start the wheel again and, you know, make that consistent marketing because you didn't think it worked because you didn't wait long enough. And, you know, so. Hey, Tangie, but, um, my team thinks they fixed the QR code. So I'm going to share my screen again one time and see if it works. Perfect. So, so you guys can give it your last shot and see if it works. Is your two day event every month now, Tiffany? Um, it's normally every like six to eight weeks. We've just had the, most of our events lately have been selling out within a week of launching it. So, um, if you want to go, you definitely have to get signed up. And so if it sells out, sometimes we'll add an extra one. So it's normally every couple months. It's just lately they've been selling out really fast. So, um, so this, we have a May, June and July, and then we're not going to have another one till September, October. You know, I had somebody come to one of your weekend events one time and he said, Tanji, I had the pleasure of spending the weekend um, with Tiffany and uh, Josh. And he, I could not believe it from Friday to Sunday. It was like high octane. It was just mind-blowing. <laughs> mind -blowing. He's like, she literally wakes up in the morning and she just goes until nighttime hits. And it's like, wow. He's like, with the massive amount of, of data and knowledge or knowledge that she gave us and that we got from those guys are unbelievable and unprecedented to anything, you know? So that's awesome. Yeah, the QR code's working now. So thank you for that. So anybody on this nice. call, the QR code is working now. Um, Josh, Tiffany, are you using a platform to market your wholesale leads? Uh, where do we get the market wholesale leads? Where do we go to market them, the wholesale leads? Um, you mean to like dispo the deal? 
Do you mean to disc dispo the deal? Um, give us an answer on that because we're getting ready to wrap it up. Yes, to dispo. Um, so uh, we have a few things that we do on dispo. Um, I cover that in the virtual group. So instead of giving you like a 10 second answer, I'd rather go over in detail because it's actually a full out system to go over. Um, but we do email, text it out. One of the biggest things I recommend to you guys on the dispo side is do not mass market a deal. Like don't launch your deal out all over the place. Get really good at selling your deals to VIP buyers. There is enough I buyers in the industry now that they should be buying all of your deals. But what I see very common is when you mass market a deal um, and you don't get to know your actual buyers list, then that's when you know realtors go around you or other wholesalers and you run into all these other problems. So if there's one piece of advice is get a really solid process down mass marketing to your VIPs only first before you mass market on like a bigger scale. Perfect. Guys, I think this is going to wrap it up. It's almost 730 and we have no more lingering questions. I want to thank you guys for taking your time out to be on our webinar tonight. We've been waiting since last year to get you on. It was great to see you again. And I can't wait for yours and Josh's next training on what you were talking about earlier, doing a whole training session on that as well. And I know every time you guys train for us, you do something different. And we, we, we are going to have the replay on YouTube, guys. So if you have any family members, friends, other investor friends, any realtors, uh, or I'm sorry, real estate classes you want to send this out to like if you're at a real estate investor meeting and you say hey i got some great speakers just go to youtube tomorrow type in foreclosures daily and the, the replay will be live on the uh sorry the replay will be on the youtube tomorrow at foreclosuresdaily.com youtube so check that out and uh guys thank you so much we appreciate your time all yeah. right thanks Shanji. thanks for having us on thank you not a problem and if anybody has any lingering questions where do they go real quick um, it, if you go to tiffanyandjoshhigh.com and fill out that web form, we will schedule, we'll call you and answer whatever questions you guys have, but Thanks you need so to much. fill out the form entirely so that we understand what your business looks like today. Okay, guys, it's any great. lingering questions, do what Tiffany just said, and it'll be on YouTube tomorrow under foreclosure daily. Thanks and have a great evening. Bye everybody.